Today, we're making bucket stilts for an old pair of shoes and about $7 in supplies. You can get to this first level. Interested? Here we go. For this first level build, you'll need two 21 inch long, quarter inch thick paint stirrers and two buckets and an old pair of shoes. I'm reusing the shoes from my killer shoe spike video. I'll post that somewhere up here or down below. If you want further details on how to make these and I'll go into depth about the shoes and how I made those. But just as an overall quick review is I have a pattern of five bolts. You can use bolts or screws. But for this build, because you're cranking through a bucket like this, I would use number 10, one and three quarter inch long bolts, three sixteenth inch or number 10 washers, three quarter inch. I got one in the center of the shoe, two in the heel and two in the toe. And you can see there's actually holes that I made and cut through in order to get a screwdriver in there to hold the bolts in place that come out the other side. Now, depending on how thick your shoe is, you may not have to use a one and three quarter. If I look at these, I probably could get away with a one and a quarter inch. And that would just mean you just have less cranking to do. And all these bolts have washers. So you need five for the inside of the shoe and five for this side of the bucket. And then you put on these nylon lock nuts, number 10, 24 thread on this end to make sure it all ties in together. A couple three bucks for the hardware. The shoes are old. I would have thrown them away anyway. The buckets are $2.50 a piece. So for around seven to eight dollars, you can make your own pair of 14, 15 inch tall bucket stilts. All right, I have modified my approach significantly building this first one. So I'm going to show you what I did. So I used a hacksaw and trimmed off this little lip here. It sticks out about three quarters of an inch. And I was concerned that it would be a tripping hazard. So I just trimmed it down and I've marked the location here and here. And the great thing about doing this is you have to take this handle off anyway. So using the hacksaw makes that quick and easy. Now on the top, you've got the center and you can see that I have toe and heel and heel and that's the center one. Center one's going to go right there in the center of the, and then I'm just going to drill holes. This is one of those opportunities where I'm reusing or multi-purposing one design into a completely functional and new design. I started out with a 564 drill bit just to start the holes out and to make sure that these things were tracking in the right location. And then I expanded it out to a 730 seconds drill to give me some spacing to move those around and make sure that it's going to fit in there rather easily without these things twisting and turning on the other side of the bucket. Because I'm trying to align five different bolts in this setup. The other thing is, is you can see that I've tried to center the shoe as much as possible and then ratchet it down on the other end. Take this handle off using the hacksaw and just cutting down through here. All right, you can see that I've cut off this piece right here, which makes this real easy to take the handle off. Originally, I used a hacksaw to cut this down, and then later on I realized I probably need to trim that down. You can see I have a black line here and a line here. And I'm just going to trim that down to give me plenty of space here to avoid any tripping hazard. So I'm going to cut right to the corner there on either side to keep the structure as intact as possible. So let me cut that off. I'll be right back with you. Okay, once I finish the cut here, I used a straight cutter and just kind of carefully trimmed all the excess off and smoothed it out. I also took the drill, so all the pilot holes have been drilled, and now it's time to go to the bigger drill, the 732nd, and put these in. I'm probably going to start 
with the center hole first, then do the toe, and that just will make sure that these are right in the back. Okay, the holes are drilled. So now I've got this all done, and now I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to center the piece of wood, and then take a pencil and turn around here this way so you can see it. Putting this in the center, and then just scribing for these wooden reinforcements. I was thinking about using plywood, but then I was just like, you know, keep it simple, and if for some reason this doesn't work, I'll follow up in the comments and tell you that I moved to plywood. Got marks, good. And then we'll turn this around and do the same thing to the heel. And then I'll mark this toe and then heel and cut them out using a coping saw because of the curve. You can use a hacksaw, I guess. Just have to sand it down a little bit, maybe. I noticed that this particular bucket had a lot of residual material left behind from when they made it. I trimmed that all off with a straight cutter to retrace my lines. I'm gonna use this coping saw and I'm gonna cut inside this line here to compensate for the thickness of the bucket ridge. So I'll go off and do that and then bring them back and show you what my next step is. I've got some tape here. It's all lined up nice and flush with the edges. And I've got a spacer in the middle here. Now, I've taped this all down. I'm gonna turn it upside down. You see I got the final holes in the inside. And then I'm gonna take a center punch and figure out exactly where to, to drill the holes inside the wood as a final point. So I'll take these off. Drill the holes on the other side and start putting it together. With a little bit of persuasion, we got the shoe on. We're lining it up on the bucket and just pushing it all down. And put another uh, rubber spacer in here because there is an arch on this part of it. And so what I'm gonna do is turn it over. I've got my bolts on this side and I'm going to put a number 10 washer on each one of these, then standard nylon lock nuts to hold it all in place. The first level of the build is done. 15 inches extension from the ground to where you stand. Now it's time to go test them out. Just sitting up here and make it easier to put them on. I'm thinking about using the quick laces, the elastic laces, I'll post a video if you don't know what those are. Let's see, up here somewhere <laughs> and down below. Okay, one's on. They're very lightweight. They weigh as much as a bucket does. And a shoe, which there's not much more to it than that. All right. They're like moon shoes. If you're a little nervous, I guess you could hold on to that, but very lightweight. And relatively stable. I mean, stilts are, you're above the ground. Let's move those guys out of the way. Do some sideward walking. Frontward walking. Backward walking. So if I'm working up here, that would be great. Now, this is where a second level might be pretty good. Very comfortable. I'm glad I did cut off the side here because I, not that you probably would trip, but it just takes it down so that way you, if you hit this guy you're sliding down you're not ending up on that lip so that really makes it a little safer but these are stilts any stilts can be dangerous as far as stability you've got that whole the circle of the bucket that keeps you relatively safe and you don't have to worry about the ankle things you don't need the ankle support Got a lot of pivot action going on here. 
you can't even tell that you're wearing the buckets. They're that light. The wooden painting sticks work well. I just painted them blue. They are very comfortable and once you get used to them, they're relatively safe, but you're dealing with gravity. I can't guarantee your build. So if you do something like this, it's at your own risk. But I've tried to make these as safe as possible. I weigh 175 pounds. If you weigh much more than that, you'd probably want to use quarter inch plywood and make a circle instead of these slats across like I've done here. Totally up to you. It's your build. But if you do something like that, I'd be interested to see what you think and how it worked out for you. They work great on concrete and confined spaces. They're a little loud or on concrete there. I just slid, was able to recover. Tiles the same way outside grass, fine. The fact that you got nothing there, you can kind of go over surfaces where maybe there's some things on the floor and you just walk over them. You don't have to worry about tipping or anything like that. I'm really happy with these. So now that we've proven the first level, why not just amp it up even higher to a second level, 29 inches. By the way, it's a, this design could also be expanded bucket by bucket, unlimited. Although <laughs> much past here, it gets a little unstable, I would imagine. Hasn't been tested yet. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciate Thanks for watching. If you're interested in builds of all sorts, cosplay, prop building, making and breaking things, designs of all kinds, check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're going to see. And stay tuned for the next level coming soon. Or if it's already posted, I'll link it up here or down there.